All right, if we get Jason Garrett news, like, it's got to be said out loud. <laughs> you can start off with that. <laughs> oh, my God, I can't wait. It's going to happen. I know it. He's going right. to ruin Saquon Barkley. Oh, dude. All right, we're up. What's going on, guys? Welcome to another edition of Analytically Correct. We're here at Public House on University with Rob and Stretch. Um, we're going to get into um, a bunch of the coaching hires that happened this past week. How stupid they are or how not stupid they are. I don't know. Nobody knows anything about coaches anyways. And then uh, we're going to recap the playoff games from last week, get into the games from next week. And then uh, I had a couple of basketball things that I wanted to get into. Uh, I got something for Clippers fans a little bit later. Um, but going, going back into last week, we could kind of go game by game, um, starting with Texans Bills. But actually, like, a, a surprisingly, a much better game than I thought it was going to be. You know, they put that game in the middle of the afternoon on Saturday because it's the Texans and the Bills. Mm -hmm. um, but go, going into the fourth quarter, I mean, if uh, my takeaway from it and somebody who had money on the, uh, on the Bills, Josh Allen does the two things that you can't do at the end of that game. They're in field goal range, and somehow he loses mm -hmm. 15 yards. He does the thing you can't do twice. He gets sacked for, like, a 15-yard loss, yeah. and then he gets sacked for, like, a 20-yard loss with an intentional grounding. Mm -hmm. And then he, after the game, he says, I have to be better. And it's like, no shit. Like, you're, you're, not, you're not the guy who pushes the ball down the field or anything like that. And, and the only thing that people have been crediting you with all season, as far as the offense goes, is not making those mistakes. Like, you're not going to beat yourselves. Mm -hmm. That's what everyone said about the Bills. Well, I think, too, this is also the biggest moment Josh Allen's ever had in his NFL career, in his football career. Yeah, I mean, football life. I mean, he played football at Wyoming. <laughs> all of 5,000 people are probably at the game. I mean, it's... Buffalo's a lot like Wyoming, I feel like. I don't know about but Yeah, but, like, Buffalo fandom and versus oh. Wyoming fandom, yeah, it's like, I mean, it's those, just, those people the, come out to watch Bills games. Those are the ones who, like, light themselves on fire and jump off of yeah. porta potties and break... I want to go to that tailgate. Bills Mafia. I want to go to that tailgate. That sounds pretty fun. But I um I, I I was not impressed with that game. I thought that was the worst game I've like in this week, dude. It's because that was a bad game. Yeah. It's because it got it was close, but it was like when you're watching it, it was just sloppy. Deshaun Watson didn't look good until like the last hat for the fourth quarter. Yeah. It, it, it just looked like a game. You're like, okay, do any of you want to like play anyone next? Like, is this? Do you guys want to win this game? It was on both sides. You know, Josh Allen had that ridiculous lateral with like 33 seconds left, where he was trying to throw it behind him to somebody. I was like, why? There was no need to do that. Yeah. It's, it seemed kind of like the moment was too big for him. And, yeah. and the guy I was, I forgot who I was talking to at work, but it was, it was, uh, I was at work watching the game, unfortunately. Um, but it's like. In that moment, you know, and like I'm like the guy's been playing football his whole life. You know, in that moment, the only thing you can't do is take a sack. That's it, yeah. And to him, he's like, well, it was a rookie mistake. Like you have to know the situation, and I don't know how I feel about that. It's like, like oh, he's, said, a, he's a rookie, but you've been playing football. Yeah. You know, you know situations. That's a football situation. You know right situations there. like that. You're, you've been playing football your entire life. Now, like, granted, the guys are coming at you a lot faster than ever before, but at the same but, time, but you it's have like, to know yeah. if, if the worst possible thing happens, which is pressure up the middle. Right in your face. Yes. Just, just get rid Which, of it. You should kind of already know what's coming at that point. They like, especially then, with a young quarterback, and trying to rattle him. Quickly. And then, if you're the coach, you kind of have to help him out as well. Like, yeah. don't put him in that situation. If you're already in field goal range, now it worked out. They wound up going to overtime, anyways. But if you want to juxtapose, they had a chance to win that game. The Bills had a chance to win that game. E either, and that's one of the themes that was all throughout the weekend. Every single game was a one-score game. I know most most games in the NFL are like that. That's yeah. why when teams are like, oh, we were, uh, we had like whatever our record was, and we were all at one score games. Like, the entire league is one score yeah, games. So That's why all the spreads like, are under 10 points. Yeah, it's not college where, you know, people um, went 43 to, like, 12. If, if you want to juxtapose Deshaun Watson's performance against Josh I Allen, though. I thought Watson should have played a lot better. I feel, I, like, I feel like that's how I feel every game with him. And I'm with you and there. With like, like it's it, that's the thing. Like, this, build, this Texans team is... Well, what are you guys missing now? Like, at first it was the quarterback. It was a playmaker. And it was this. And it was that. And, like, you got J.J. back now. Right. They, they should have looked a lot better against the Bills. And I, I thought they, if they were to really put a statement out there, they should have beat the hell out of the Bills and really put a statement out. Like, when you watch – and I understand that the Titans and the uh, pass game was a close game. But, like – the Pats defense is elite. Right. The Texas defense is not elite. It's a good defense. It's not an elite defense. Like there's there's a difference in just like in, in yeah. that saying right there. And it was a weird weekend overall. I think what was the mo the most points scored? Twenty six points. Yeah. Um, With all, the all, Vikings. All the unders I think pretty much hit. And then another another like anomaly. It's been going on this whole season. If you've been following like sports betting mm -hmm. and everything. But home field advantage is almost like non-existent anymore. Yeah. It doesn't. It, I don't mm -hmm. know if it's because of like the after sale ticket market or. 
it's just not the same with the fans. I don't. But but three out of the four teams that won were on the road. Mm. Um, and then that includes. We'll get to the. I think that's pretty much it for Texans Bills, right? I mean, we we'll get into the next week's games. But yeah, you were kind of criticizing the whole game. On our, I just didn't uh, on our like that. I, I just didn't like, like it. It was sloppy. It was a sloppy game. Stretch is like, this game's awesome. And then Rob just replied, like, this game sucks. The game was a sloppy game. It was just like, come on. Like, it's just like, it was just a very, like, the, and I understand, it, not, not that it was low scoring that it was sloppy, because, like I said, New England and Tennessee was, like, low scoring, but that wasn't sloppy. That was a lot of deep, like, there was a lot of, it was a chess match. Literally, that game was a chess match. That one was just like, it was like, you know, those like five guys that are playing at one, like, you know, LA Fitness basketball. Like, God, this is why nobody picked you. <laughs> like, this is why. This is why, like, the game's going on and they're hanging out at, like, the back court and you're coming up court and they get the hell out the way. Like, that's what the, that game was to me. That, it was, it was that, <clears throat> that on the chat. And then uh, when I thought everybody else was, like, in the, in the group chat live and then I just put off, like, 15 straight messages, me watching the end of the Saints game and then nobody replied to anything. <laughs> just like, I was at work during that. I saw. <laughs> I saw both of you guys post something recently, and I was like, oh, shit, look at this game. And there was nobody post. I'm just, oh, like, keep talking to myself. Can we please, like, can we just, like, attack the Saints right now? Because I'm so livid with them. Yeah, I was going to go uh, game by game. But if you want to go to uh, the Saints, I think in the same vein, maybe what you're going to say, mm. we have to kind of look at Drew Brees. And then just to kind of go with the Patriots game, too, you look at Tom Brady and, like, the lack of help that he's yes. had at this point in his career. Drew Brees has Alvin Kamara, Michael Thomas, whatever you think about Jared Cook, he's like an above average tight end. But his tight ends, he's made work with whoever's in yeah, there. Yeah, your second running back, Latavius, I mean. You the, have a head coach in Sean Payton. Yeah, you the, have a very solid defense. The, the, the point is, uh, you have a lot of help, and if, and, and it was not even that excuse of mm -hmm. where you're on the road, like you're at home in the dome, one of the things where you should still have a home field advantage. And then to lose the game like that, I mean. And I'm so tired of hearing Saint fans cry. And oh no! Cry it was, and, and, and I've heard so many people say that it was like clearly pass interference on that count. It wasn't pass interference. Number one, grow up. Why are you in this situation? Why did Taysom Hill have more, have a more explosive play than Drew Brees at all game? Why was Kamara bad all game? Why was Michael Thomas well, not what well, he should have been? Kamara all game? wasn't even bad all game. They gave him the ball like 15. You got to give him the ball like yeah. 25 times but, at I least. I mean, the same, my whole thing with them is it's always something. It's always some song and dance like just. Here's the thing. One play does not determine a football game. Yeah, and it it, never has, if you keep never putting will. yourself in a situation where one play is yes. going to, if you keep, like, year after year, if you keep putting yourself in that situation, you have Drew Brees. Yes. They have Kirk Cousins. That's it. That's, two like, year, all you need to know about that. Two years that. ago, they let, they let Case Keenum th go throw for, like, 400 yards, and they got beat to hell by the Eagles. Last year, yeah, there was a missed play, uh, pass interference call, but you also missed a field goal after that missed pass interference call, and you threw an interception after that missed pass interference call. And then this year it's just like, okay, like, what's the problem now this year, guys? Like, yeah, wh what's the next song in Oh, we pushed off a little bit? Okay, you know what? Why, why did Drew Brees ever, like I said, this, this thing, I'm annoyed just because I picked and them to win it. And you know that play is coming, too. Like, yes. That's why I always have about, like, um, coaches, GMs, all this stuff. Like, I'm just a person who does a sports podcast in a bar, and I watch football. And I know that when they split, yes. when they split Kyle Rudolph off to the, uh, out to the top of the field by himself, they're going to throw it to Kyle Rudolph. Yes. It's and you leave him single covered up there, like. I, I, and everyone's talking about the oh, Lattimore got hurt. That wouldn't have happened. Well, guess what? It's football. It's an injury. It's a sport where you're going to get hurt more than any other sport. That is why you wear a helmet. That is exactly why. I just, I'm done with the Drew Brees talking. Is he like, is he the next goat? No, because look at what he's had. Look what he's been surrounded by, and look what he's actually done. He's put up <laughs> a lot of numbers. He's never won anything major uh, recently. No, I mean, and it's crazy how much a, a Super Bowl can just change oh, your entire life. Oh, completely. God, yeah. Dude. If he doesn't have it, we're talking about it completely different oh yeah and you talk about what it does for a coach stretch says it gives him like 10 years of credibility and you can hang around for 10 years mm -hmm. but for a quarterback it's almost like once you win one that's it like yeah. Aaron, Aaron Rodgers as much as I love him like you've he, he well he hasn't had the weapons Drew Brees has had but I mean you should be winning more than mm -hmm. one Super Bowl like but that's the thing like my problem with the Saints this year is like when I picked the Saints this year I really thought okay this could be like this this is a team that's Drew Brees is back. He's looking aggressive. They're looking healthier. I mean, I picked them to beat the Ravens uh, last Who did week. I pick? I think mine's still – I think I picked Vikings and somebody. I don't know. Vikings remember. is a pick that when we start uh, – when we talked about a lot, yeah, I get it. He's done a lot. But, like – No, dude, that's fine. But it's one of those things Get him you, out. He's not in the conversation with Tom Brady or Peyton Manning. If you want to – yeah. stay out of that conversation. When it, when it comes down to it – He won in New Orleans. Awesome, man. Like, it's Right. What, Orleans, what does that dude, mean? I yeah, care. I don't uh, – you, if you win in any city. But when it comes when it comes down to it, it's all regular season stats. He plays. If you look at it in the conference, they are still celebrating it. He is definitely right about that. Yeah, they they, they play in a and he plays in the conference. Where he plays eight of his games in a dome. I heard this. Someone else made this point. He plays eight of his games in a dome. 
plays two games against uh, the Falcons that's in a dome. Yes. He plays uh, one game maybe that's kind of cold outside in Carolina mm. per year. And then, um, <clears throat> so. I don't think, I mean, the whole leaving him for dead is just, I mean, I, I just. Uh, he's 4 7, I like it. <laughs> The four seven comment is the best right we're, there. We're not saying that Drew Brees is not a good quarterback. We're saying no, once, that's you, a, once you keep him out of the conversation once you get, on Tom Brady. Once you get to that's the highest it. level, the, the difference and yes. the tiebreaker is Super Bowls and how you do in the playoffs. Yes, and that's it's if you had to guess, what do you think Drew Brees' playoff record is? It's under five hundred. It's eight and eight. Oh, is it? Okay. I thought it was like so, okay. I thought yeah, it was a game or two under five hundred. It's eight and eight. You know what Eli Manning's is? I don't want to ask. Eight and four. So like, uh, once we're getting into the playoffs and you're talking about like the highest level. Um, yeah, he's the first yeah, no, we're player. not saying that. We're just saying if you want to compare him to the best, and people want to complain that he gets left off of like the ESPN 100. He's not list. a goat. That's what he is. He's not a goat. Yeah, he's no. not in the conversation for a goat. He, 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 he over- doesn't make noises like a goat. He's not a goat. <laughs> Dan Marino, he's not even dead. First of all, <laughs> why did Dan Marino roll his grave? That's fine. Uh, Win a Super Bowl then. I mean, I don't know. What I still think he's the best. I still, I still think he's the best quarterback. Do it now, pound and do it pound. again. <laughs> pound for pound. Um, yeah, I can only talk about people who I watched. I mean, I, I hear a lot about Joe Montana. Um, to me, Aaron Rodgers is the best quarterback that I've ever watched play football. Better but than Payne. But if you yeah. want to talk about resumes and everything like that, you have to go with like Tom Brady. If you want, but I'm saying just quarterbacks who I've watched play. It's like when people talk about John Elway being like the most gifted passer of all. Yeah, time. like uh, it's the same kind of thing. But he only won the one Super Bowl. Yeah, no, two. He won two. Two, yeah. Um, somebody in my fantasy football league too uh, this year uh, argue, was getting into an argument with somebody that Dan Mar- if, I don't know if Chuck's watching, but he got into an argument with somebody in my fantasy football league that Dan Marino won multiple Super Bowls. And no, everybody's okay. just looking at him like, no, no, stop, don't, don't. Yeah, no, it's, it's what everyone does. I mean, you would you would hope, and like if you watch him play, you would think, yeah, he did. I'm not saying like, I mean, I don't think he's better than Peyton Man. I don't think he's in that conversation either. Like I said, this guy's had a lot to work with. He's had a, he's, the thing too is he's had a head, a great head coach in New Orleans for lo- as long as he's been there. I just don't look at, I just don't like, I'm not against Drew Brees. I'm just kind of over the, the conversation only, the, only the, thing goat, like, the only thing we're saying is when you get to the highest level, yeah. we're not putting him ahead of guys like Tom Brady, Peyton Manning. I mean, if I'm you not look, putting him above Dan Marino, you, whether he has a ring or not. Yeah, if you look back at his career too, I mean, it, it hurts him that he's played with some of the best quarterbacks in his era, but he was never the MVP. He was never the best quarterback in any given season. I mean, Lamar Jackson's second season, he wins an MVP. Mm-hmm. Drew Brees never won one. And I'm not like we can't stress enough. We're not saying he's not good. All we're saying is that he's not the best of the best. Yeah, like, he's not, like yeah. At, at, at the top tier, he's on the lower end of the top tier. That's it. Yeah. Um, the Chris Carter of wide receivers. Yeah, great receiver, is, but like when you talk about great receivers, you're like um, Chris Carter. T- Titans, Titans, Patriots. Uh, I had the Titans on the money line. God, so man, Derrick Henry, dude. <laughs> dude. Great job, but come on, man. I, I had to look, 16 I, I had still? To, I, I had to look back at it, and I was wondering, like, because I know he hasn't, he's hasn't. he been in the league for, like, four years. Dude. I think the only reason that he wasn't this sooner was, like, usage. He was sharing time with uh, Murray, and, Murray and, uh, yeah. and also the other one you, for a second. Too. Yeah, if you look at it, he's had the same average, because uh, if you go back to the uh, end of last season, he's been the best running back in football, like, hands he's down. Been. And that's that's the best running back in football without having like any threat of receiving. So like when he's on the field, it's like the Sonny Michelle thing. When he's on the field, you know he's running the ball. So Derrick Henry's that's doing scary. this. So Derrick, <laughs> Derrick Henry. So Derrick Henry's doing this against like eight men boxes and every time because for his receptions. Uh, but they are very. I mean, Tennessee has a very good run a run blocking scheme. So they run off a zone scheme. I mean, they. They may, running is a very big part of their team the past three years. Yeah. They've really shown it. Even when Demarco Murray was there, mm-hmm. they, he ran the ball well. They, they run they run as much of an old school NFL yeah. offense as any team in the league right now. Not counting the Ravens. The, the offensive that's, line moves very well. I mean, they they yeah. they know where to be, when to be there, and they re, and they just react great. And the thing with Derrick Henry too is just like he's just a physical anomaly. Because when you look at him, he's 650. I mean, he's 250 at 6'3". Six, uh, six yeah. I mean, he's not easy to bring down, and a guy that big doesn't get easier towards the end of the game either. It only gets tougher. The lot, I mean, the more you have to throw yourself at this guy, and he's only, like, getting stronger and stronger per game. Well, we'll get into this when we talk about next week's matchups and everything, but I think that that's a tough matchup for, um, for, for the Ravens. 
But as far as that game goes, I mean, more, more people are talking about the Patriots and the Titans, and we don't know anything more than anybody mm -hmm. else as far as where Tom Brady's going, what's going to happen I with do. Bill Belichick. You do know? I do know. What, what's going to happen? Cleveland. Rob Peter, Tom, Tom Brady's, Brady's going to like, Cleveland. Cleveland, wow. Tom, Cleveland is the reason. And you said Baker's going to the Chargers. Baker's going to the Chargers. So why wouldn't Tom Brady just go to the Chargers? Because there's not a – like, when you go to – like, think of – when you – like I said, when you look at Tom Brady in Cleveland, the picture is – he needs a good slot receiver. You have Jarvis Landry. You need a playmaking receiver. You have a backup. Well, he had Gronk. He needs a good tight end. And Joku's a better tight end than he's been able to put it out there. No, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the defense is solid. They run the ball very well. I just think the – and most of all, Tom Brady, like, I know he knows the stigma, quote, unquote, of, like, oh, you've been with the Belichick. Oh, you only won in New England. If you win in Cleveland, nobody will ever forget you won in Cleveland. Even I the Belichick think, couldn't do that. And Cleveland, too, the number one thing about this and why I'm saying this is Cleveland, you have to be desperate to get Tom Brady. You have to be realistic and realize you're getting a year or two tops. And I think that he is going to be <laughs> the Jets, man. <laughs> Dude, imagine that trade. I thought we were already talking about the worst franchise, and then you brought up the Jets. <laughs> but no, when you look at it, you're going to be a desperate team. you got to go for them. And I think, you know, Tom Brady and Cleveland, man, that's that's the move, and that's what's going to – I I feel very strongly about that one. This is as strong as I felt about – not as strong as I felt about Kevin Durant and Kyrie to Brooklyn, but this is right – like, this is right below it. I'm, I'm very strong on this. I haven't heard anybody else say it, so, I mean, unless Rex Ryan steals it like your other team. <laughs> What was the Rex, what was the Rex Ryan take that that he's told? That's right. Supposedly he said that he thinks Cleveland stretch uh, solid. He's heard it. I've been looking on the odds where Tom can go. I haven't seen Cleveland in those odds yet. The Chargers are definitely in those odds a lot. I think the Raiders are a possibility too, though. Going to Vegas, new stadium. I can see them really trying to you know talk, John Gruden maybe wants a veteran quarterback to go out there and lead the team. They, I, I just don't think that's a team that can, like, I think Tom can win a Super Bowl with Cleveland next year. I don't think Tom was really, Tom, when he played this year at 42, he didn't look like he was 42. No, 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 no. But and, his and, offense and that was made with him some, look That worse. was with some of his worst receivers ever. They yeah. had no running game. I mean, the, the only thing about that whole entire team was the defense. But it, I, I just, I mean, the betting odds online are minus 200 for him to come back to the yeah. Patriots. And it's like minus 1,000 for him to re, uh, to not retire. I, I'm, so, I if mean, the I'm, odds come out on Cleveland, I'm definitely putting money on that one. I think it might be out right now. I mean, I don't have it. I've looked. I've been, I've been kind of steady on that one. Yeah, I've been kind of steady. I think it'll more will show when the season's over, to be honest with you. But I think, you know, when you really look at it, I know people are going to start their guessing game, but don't count Cleveland out of it. They just lost their GM. They just lost their head coach. They may move on from Baker and realize there's value in him, and they can – they can get a win now, and they can get. What if they just did a like a? Well, I guess he's a free agent, but I was gonna say, what if they just did a trade straight up Baker for Tom Brady, sign and trade or something? That's, that's, I feel like New England really be losing, man. I don't think that right now Tom Brady is that much better than Baker Mayfield. I, I know you hate Baker Mayfield. You have like some. He did something to you personally. He did nothing to me. It's just I just don't understand how this guy like convinced everyone he was the number one pick. Well, he had one good season, one bad season. I'm so, so upset the one good season. I know, that's why I said He had it. a rookie season and a bad season. He had a rookie season that was pretty good, and then a, a, a second season that was inexplicably... I think he was third in interceptions behind Phillip and Jameis, I think. I think that's the way it went on those uh, with the order. Oh but I will God. say with Baker, man, I just... He's, what about Jameis to the Patriots? That would be awesome. Everyone keeps talking about Jameis. I don't think Jameis is going really much of any. Like, no one's going to pay Jameis that money. $30 million. Dude, no one's Nick, pay Nick Foles just got like 20-something million a year. And I think everyone's kind of looking at that and be like, okay. Like, that, I, I, sometimes I think you're needs, giving them way – I think you you're giving the, GMs way too much credit. You need the Matt Flynn's to happen to make you kind of look at some and not really – I just – there are not a lot of quarterback-heavy teams that are not with early draft picks right now, you if, know? If, we did, if the Lions did not have Matthew Stafford, I would take Jameis Winston. Really? At least you know it's going to be – not, not, oh, not over Stafford, but at least you know the game's going to be entertaining. Like, if you're going to lose, at least make it entertaining. How about, how about too, uh, I think that also solidified him not retiring, but how about that pick six at the end of the Titans-Patriots That game? was uh, just kind of, when Tom's and then everyone, the last three and a half minutes was, was like, looking rough. He's like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, like, he, he was putting like, nobody back to, well, put nobody back to receive the kick, and then it rolls down to the one-yard line. He looked defeated after Edelman dropped that uh, first down. Which never happened. Like, yeah. Once that like, happened, once he, like, once he saw that, I think it kind of just looked like, this is like, really, like, this is what I'm dealing with. And it's, people are killing him left and right. This was a really bad, like, supporting cast. And I understand, oh, he's Tom Brady. Okay, he's 42. He needs a supporting cast now. Like, I get that he's won without a supporting cast, but he was 24 when he did that, 23. Like, Yeah, I'm, I'm, looking, at, I'm looking at the other teams in the playoffs that played in wildcard weekend, and 
you can say uh, clearly that Brady had the worst skill position oh, player. I mean, I mean, Bills, maybe? Philly's in there. Philly's well, they have now. everybody injured. Yeah. Even when they were healthy, they didn't have, like, world beaters or anything Carson, like that. Carson, every time I get hit, I win. <laughs> well, he gets hit a lot, too. I know. He leads the league in, like, going to commercial break, and Carson Wentz, like, limp <laughs> limping off. You're like, oh, God. This guy, man, talk about a down. For, for such a big guy, too, he's always getting the shit kicked Just out. Just talk about it. Like, well, he's never really completed a full season of any one of his years, I think. I know in college he didn't play his full college season. He hasn't played a full NFL season, and it's nothing. I like obviously like I'm a Cowboys fan. I dealt with Tony Romo getting hurt, and it sucks when you see that. But like Eagle fans, once that happened, it was just looking like wow, you know. Because I'm a big Carson. I hate seeing Carson Wentz play for Philly, but as a as a talent, I like Carson Wentz. I think he's a top tier talent. He is a very good talent. You saw what he did. He was able to. If you put him in Dallas, I think we win 13 games personally. Like I just think he's he's. Able to win nine games, go to the you, playoffs. You, and Baker Mayfield and Dak Prescott, you have like something against both of these guys. I, Dak is, whether you like it or not, Dak is going to be your quarterback for no, the he, next 10 years. It sucks, but yeah. What do you mean it sucks? Dude, would you rather have Dak Prescott or Matthew Stafford? I think I, I would rather have Dak. If you guys had Ezekiel Elliott, you'd be you'd be just fine. Like Matthew you Stafford, had Barry Sanders, and we weren't fine. But you also have who's the quarterback? You could give Barry us Calvin Sanders. Johnson, and we won't be fine. But like that's what I'm saying. Like if you gave Matthew Stafford to the Cowboys, we would be a little bit better. I personally think. I, I personally think we make the playoffs with Matthew. Well, Stafford he's going to wind year. up making the same amount of money anyways as Matthew Stafford, so it doesn't I get, really make it. That's, I get that. That's I'm just, just saying, what quarterbacks like, make. That's how much quarterbacks get paid now. But here's my thing: just because they have to get paid, that doesn't mean you can pay that. You have to pay them that. Like, yeah, you may like you may get paid this, but it's like my argument my argument comes at quarterbacks. Does Dak Prescott make anyone a playoff contender right away if he didn't make this team a playoff contender right away? He doesn't. I mean the Bills? Would the Bills have won if did they the had Bills, Dak Prescott? Did, no. Did they like the Bills have made would not have made the playoffs. Would the Patriots have won if they had Dak Prescott? The, the Patriots? No, I don't believe so, dude. And then it went with Tom Brady this year, and Tom Brady was able to like you look at you have to surround Dak with a lot of talent at 25, 26. That's a problem. Quarterbacks at that age that get paid a lot but you should be able to go out there and make it. You say you have to surround him with talent, but he, he's, you've never seen what he had to do without talent. He's yeah, always, I did. I saw him without Amari Cooper. I saw him with Des Bryant and Cole Beasley. What, that offense looked awful. What happened was we had nine in the box at times. Right, but Z. then you have to come down to the whole coaching thing, too. And we'll, I get we'll, coaching, but... I guess we can get into that, too. Well, I don't know. We'll finish the playoff games, and then we'll talk about the coaching and shit. Um, but, but I don't know. Uh, so as far as Titans Patriots, we pretty much covered that. Um, we don't know what Brady's gonna do. I think that's the most interesting thing. That from is. That it's, game. Gonna be, it's gonna be the long story and all then, off season. The after, lingering. after, yeah. And then of course Bill Belichick immediately is pissed that somebody asked a question. It's like, listen, guy, figure it the fuck out. Like this oh is what God. people want to know about. <laughs> this, this is so great. Like he knows he's not gonna get that question. Yeah, come on. Like, like he knows that I'm all. Did questions you just wake up and like at. I'm decide to be an asshole? Yeah, today? we're gonna talk about what I could have done better. Still. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's I don't great. know. How about you put somebody back to receive the punt and not let it roll to the one yard line? That was great. Um, so Eagle Eagle Seahawks was the the last game of the weekend. That was an ugly and, game and, too. And, and kind of just a. Uh, uh, a microcosm of the entire Eagles season yeah. is Clowney knocking out Wentz from the game, and everybody else is already hurt on the Eagles. And then surprisingly, they only lost by eight. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if that says more about the Seahawks or the Eagles or Josh McCown, but. Well, I think Philly's coaching is a very good, solid coaching group too. Well, like one, one of the things where it goes all the way from owner to GM. Yeah, to, they, to they have one of the best everything. run, like when it comes to that. Even like, like for oh, them to oh. go out there and win, because when you look at them, when they won the Super Bowl, I mean that season alone shows you, like, yeah, they went out there with a backup. Their best playmaker was Alshon Jeffrey, but before then, you didn't consider Alshon Jeffrey even a top ten receiver, really. O like, overachieved yeah. uh, in every way this season. I mean, the, then they kind of backed in as like the only shitty team from a shitty division. But since uh, they no won, offense, made, but, uh, since they won the Super Bowl, they've been making the playoffs. Yeah, it hasn't been like they've had this and, drop off. Then Carson Wentz. I mean, at some point, you know, it comes down to like we say, if this guy can stay healthy, and yes. as, the more you say it, like eventually, it's just never going to happen. Yeah, but. Carson Wentz, when the season that he was the most healthy was the MVP conversation. Yeah, he was like, and he was. So if this team can stay healthy next year, and I trust that they'll have a good draft and they'll have a good free agency period, I mean, you can't really count the Eagles out as far as their season goes. I think it was more of a success than a failure. Like once mm -hmm. so many people get hurt, we talk about the Patriots not having people to surround Tom Brady. You're talking about one of the best quarterbacks of all time, having not having enough weapons. You give, uh, I think it was, there was a stat for Carson Wentz that was the only. 4,000 yard passing season of all mm -hmm. time that didn't include a 500 yard yeah. wide receiver. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you're not even, you don't even have an average wide receiver. Yeah. You, don't need, you don't even have a Michael Gallup. 
Uh, it's, um, when you when you watch Carson, I think it's it's clear that you know, they're gonna go after a receiver this off season. Whether I I thought Amari Cooper going there's a big possibility over there. I don't see him obviously sticking around in Dallas just because the the whole pain factor. If you're gonna we're probably gonna tag Dak. I don't think we're gonna be able to pay Cooper right away. Then be able to pay Dak the well, year after we tag. From him. what you were saying before, then if you don't think they're gonna keep Amari Cooper, then the offense is gonna go to shit. So wouldn't you want them to keep Amari Cooper? I don't want Amari Cooper, man. Not for the price he wants. And I know I'm yeah, because I know what you're saying. Budget, but it's like I said, I've I've said it before many times. If you want to be paid top dollar, you can't shut down the second half of the year. And as far as um, top tier, like number one receivers go, he would be like middle of the pack as far as that goes. Yeah, like we got a good he, value he, for it. We traded our first round, made the playoffs that year. We got a good value, but it's like, I think we can draft a T. Higgins from uh, Clemson this year and look at a wide receiver. <laughs> the Dolphin, Jared Judy. The, do, the, the Dolphins should just use all three of their first round picks on all three of the Clemson receivers. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, well, the Devontae Parker looked great this year. No, he did. And like it was the, like finally it was waiting for him to break Good out. Him, and then dude. you know I'm going to draft him in like the fourth round next year and he's going to suck in fantasy. <laughs> and you know, but that's the thing. His contract is, you know, as it's at an annual, like, you know, at 14 million or something. It's like, I just say, and I understand these guys want to get paid. I would rather have Devontae Parker at that price. If he's, if he's going to be what yeah. he was this season, with Ryan Fitzpatrick throwing in the ball on the Dolphins team, I would rather have him at that price than I would rather have Amari. Amari, Amari Cooper is good, and but like you said, if you're gonna get that number one, he, Amari Cooper is gonna go to the Jets. Let's face it. Yeah, yeah go something to, like that. Yeah, he's gonna go to a team like the Jets or, or something like that. And when you, it's just like the game that really told me, okay, I don't even care for him to be on the team is when he couldn't get separation against Philly. Can you name any of the corners that he was playing against that game? No, I mean there was just. The, the guy, there were four string slot corners back there. Like, this guy was going up against nobodies, and he got to take the game over. And it's just like, you know, at, at a certain point, you can't get shut down by uh, corners. You can't you can't go catchless. I don't care who you're playing on the other side. Like, that's that's just embarrassing. That's like Embiid not scoring any points yes. in, in a regular season yes. game. Yes. Wow, right? man, I still can't believe that happened. <laughs> How is that possible? He's 7-3, and you just have to look. Like, just kind of toss it to the side. And, and, and not even to get too far off track, but then Jokic – has a game the other night where he has 46 points and zero turnovers. And you're like, if you have like the physical like gifts of Embiid, mm. just how about just work out and come into the season and, and just be like a monster and be the, he has the talent to be the best player yeah, in the league. Yeah, he does, man. He could be Anthony Davis. He has a drive for it too. And, and, and now Josh Richardson, and now we're getting way off track, but Josh Richardson who came from the Heat to Philly is saying the same things that Jimmy Butler said when he was leaving Philly is that the team doesn't care about winning. Ben oh, Simmons, more, no. be, Ben Simmons more wants to be on TMZ. Embiid doesn't really care about winning that much. All this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. so it's like, well, that, that's it. How, I didn't how are the Heat better than the Sixers when? That's a culture si thing over there. The Sixers have a strong like the cultures have the strong disconnect that they've had it for like five years now. Whether it's with you know players, whether it's with players with front office or players with coaching, like there's just a strong disconnect. There are people that don't even like Brent Brown still over there. Like, I mean, I just think when you look at Miami, there's a great culture. Spolsters proved to be a great coach, and they, they really, you know, created yeah. a culture difference over there. Um, but that, but like we said about the Philly-Seattle game, I just thought that game was, with Carson out, it took away from the game, but I think Seattle looks really rough. Like, Seattle looks really bad. I think the Marshawn Lynch is kind of a, why did, why did you make the move? I, I kind of, CJ Spiller was I'm, still out I'm there. kind of on the wrong side of that, too, because I was excited when he came back, and mm -hmm. it looks like if you give him more than 10 carries, like, Turns out He's the NFL gassed, turns yeah. out the NFL is hard to play in, and yeah. you can't just take seasons off. And DK Metcalf, I was really great to see how he looked, man. He looked awesome in that game, and he had the big clutch catch at the end. And, and that goes back to the Patriots and Bill Belichick not being able to draft wide receivers. You draft Nikhil Harry, DK Metcalf went in the second round. And you could have, I mean, Metcalf, imagine, I that would have been a lot he would have been the best, he would, he's better than Julian Edelman right now. He would yeah. have been the best receiver yeah. on the team. It would have been good to have a guy, a big guy, go up and get it, just throw it up. And I felt a chemistry between him and Tom would have built pretty quickly. Too. Yeah, and, and they, they tried to help him out with Antonio Brown. They tried to help him out with. Um, that's, man, that, the, the Patriots had, you know, that's a crazy thing to think about. That at week one, I mean, uh, uh, week two, they were out there playing with Antonio Brown. And you look at it and you're like, wow, you know, when we saw that, he was only out there for like his, they beat the hell they, of the They started with Antonio Brown, quick. Josh Gordon, and Julian Edelman as like the third best wide receiver. Mm -hmm. If Julian Edelman's your second or third, you've got a good team. If he's and your first. He always should be realistically. As a slot. I always feel like your yeah. slot guy should well, be no more than your second. When in their season started going downhill, when people started double covering Julian Edelman. Yeah, like, and it, like that's not a guy who can get away from double cover. Yeah. He's not a Hopkins. He's not a, no. he's not a Julio he's Jones. He's not a guy who can be, yeah, exactly. It, it, but, um. That was just kind of you know the, the roughest part about that game. I think um, when you look at the next game that we're going to talk about, it's um, I'm sorry, not um, the for next week. Yeah, yeah, for the uh, next week. I think that Seattle coming in is just going to they're going to have to really, really have to bear down on what they're going to do on 
keeping the ball and running the ball and not letting the, uh, them get ran all over because that's something that they do happen to have a lot. Like something Philly was seeing success with was running the ball. I thought Miles Sanders should have been used a little bit more in the game because yeah. I thought he was starting to have a good game. He had a key drop, but I thought they should have ran the ball more and really should have like ran it at Over him. 500 yards receiving this year, Miles mm -hmm. Sanders did. He's more of a... a, a like a third, not even a third. A third down back is like an insult at this point. Yeah. To running backs, but I don't think he's like a twenty-five carry guy. But he's really no, good. I don't believe so either. Like, he, yeah, he's, I, he's, I he's do gonna believe be a nice, he's, he's an awesome player, player, player. I can definitely the, see. The, he the right would have been the best running back on the Patriots. I'll yeah. tell you that. I mean, if he had a good um, pairing with the, like, he if he has the right pairing, it can be a very very uh, detrimental team right there. Getting into next week as far as the matchups go, San Francisco at home minus seven against Minnesota. We don't have to worry too much about the spread. Uh, I like Minnesota at this in that point one. The playoffs. As far as like straight up or with the points? Or? I, I, you know, if it was straight up, I would go with on that one. But I'm not going like by seven side. But Minnesota does two things really well. They stop the run and they also put, apply a lot of pressure to the quarterback. And that's two things that you know that if you do that to San Francisco, you'll beat San Francisco. Yeah, because Garoppolo. I mean, as far as the team has looked, has looked yeah. really good. But Garoppolo hasn't looked like a top five quarterback. No, he, by any means. No, he hasn't, he's one of those yeah. things where. Everything is right around him. Yeah. Um, the, I still the think running game is awesome, obviously, but probably second. But they don't have a running back that you can be like, yeah, you, you're going to trust Raheem Mostert or Matt Breda all game. It's between all those guys, you between know, Coleman, Mostert. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I'm not oh, cool. It's like you have a good, like, it's a good running scheme. They run well with it. But like I said, I mean, Minnesota, when we made our predictions, like talking about it the season started, there was a side of me that wanted to take Minnesota, not only take Minnesota, but think this should be the most complete team because of everything they have. Right. They have a running game, they have the passing game, they have a great defense. This is a team that the, any team in the playoffs is going to make a run, I think, is Minnesota, like from a lower-seeded uh, team out of all I, these teams. Yeah, I we'll mean, get they're, into they're, next. I kind of like Tennessee, but I, uh, I, it's a tough match. I like Minnesota just because the, the the pass attack, I think, is better than Tannehill and A.J. Brown and uh, Corey yeah. Davis. I, Minnesota's one of those teams where I Davis. don't think it matters for them whether they're indoors or outdoors. Yeah. You know, on the road, we talked about how home field is not as much as it, it matter as much as it mm. used to. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I would take Minnesota with the points. Um, I like Minnesota for that. If I'm picking a, I like Minnesota in the lower seat, pulling the, the out one thing against I'll say, San Fran. The one thing I'll say, what what defense looked better than Minnesota's last weekend? Yeah, none. No, that's it. Like, and that's then they also played the best offense out of all those groups too. Like, yeah, no offense better on, than on the road yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. so, so I like, mean they showed they can go on the road. You, you have Delvin Cook healthy. Xavier um, Rhodes, if he plays like that again. Yeah, then there's no, there's nobody, and, and, and that was the, that's the thing. Like the defense was Xavier awesome. Rhodes was back. That was Rhodes the defense again. was awesome, and that was with Xavier Rhodes yeah. having a bad game. Yes, and I'm like, you know, you, you look at that team, and you, like I said, you look at Minnesota. They have the makings to make a run right now, and I do like the way they look right now. I think they're, uh, if Dalvin, the thing is not just Dalvin, because they've had other guys come in when Dalvin Madison out and still run yeah. the ball really well. It's like I said, it, it's we said all year falls on Kirk. It falls on Kirk. Like, if Kirk keeps playing the way he's playing, you know, I like that he let out that you like that. I loved it. It was great. It, it's like, you know, it, James Harrison hated on him a little bit. Why, well. why can't he just say you like that? Just do it for me one time. This, it was just great, you know? You like that. It was, I loved it. You see the energy on it. I do like seeing that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take uh, Minnesota tonight. I, I think San Francisco wins, but I think I would take Minnesota mm -hmm. with the points. We'll see. I mean, if it's seven, I would take seven. If it's less, maybe I would take San Francisco with six and a half. We'll see. Um, but like, yeah, like you said, the home, home field is not as much. I mean, I guess you have the east to west travel, but you have the whole week to yeah. figure it out or whatever. Um, Tennessee and Baltimore, I really, really, really want to pick Tennessee. Um, I definitely will take the points. The only thing is I want Baltimore to be in the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Like I think it would be the most, as far as entertainment goes, I think um, at this point, Baltimore they're, they're and Kansas City. Teams. Yeah, I mean, Baltimore and Kansas City is like everyone's dream Super Bowl. Baltimore, Baltimore and um, and Minnesota right now could look like one of the better Super Bowls when two very solid defenses and two very solid offenses and seeing what could happen between those two. That was a Super Bowl coming in this year. I just don't want Kirk Cousins in my Super Bowl. <laughs> I know, I know, man. But hey, you know what? A lot of people said that uh, Lamar Jackson, including me, would not be in the Super Bowl. But you know, if he gets in, he gets in. We'll, we'll see. This is going to be a big game because the last time we saw Lamar Jackson in a playoff game, given it was a different in offense entirely, and it was uh, about a year ago, but he went like two real-time hours without completing a pass. Yeah. Now, I can pretty much bet that's not going to happen this time. Yeah. No, I but can, yeah. Tennessee has, as an underdog, they have the system and they have the team that, that, that can keep a game close, you know, mm -hmm. can kind of like ugly it up. Um, I think the worse the worse the weather is, the better it will be. I mean, you kind of safe for either team because Baltimore has like a big running game too. Um, 
I don't know. I really want to pick Tennessee, but I, I kind of hope Baltimore. Wins. I think Tennessee. I think the Tannehill effect's going to be over. I think Baltimore's really going to come out there. This is a very. I mean. Well, it's not the Tannehill effect. It's the Derrick Henry effect. Well, the Derrick Henry effect, but it helps that Mariota is no longer like under center too. Yeah, like, I saw him came in. He came in for like, for like one a play. Well, yeah. Why did he come in? They did. I don't even know what the hell it was. Oh, to be honest with you. Dude. Oh, we can't. We can't go without mentioning this. Did you see uh, Troy Aikman during the Saints broadcast? He said. Um, I don't like, Taysom Hill came in and he's like, I don't like any play when Drew Brees is off the field and then Taysom Hill threw a 50 yard. Oh. <laughs> Immediately right after that. It's like, but I mean, can you blame him? It happens, I mean, it happens to the best of us. But Taysom Hill did look like the best quarterback in that uh, game. Uh, uh, Troy's doing, Troy's too busy killing the Cowboys right now. He's left and right been killing the Cowboys for like the past three weeks. Oh, we were kind of talking about this last night. Killing like, our ownership left it, and right. It, Rightfully it, so, he played with them. If, if you can, if you can build a team around Lamar Jackson and not that Taysom Hill is Lamar Jackson, but no, no team out there will take like a guy like Taysom Hill and try like make a, an offense my, around him. He looked really good. If you watch the Saints game, I'm not crazy. Am I like he looked really good? My team is building a team with Lamar Jackson. This is what I'm gonna say, and it's it's not that like I don't believe it can happen, but we have to see it happen for like when we say build a team around. It's gotta be more than a one year stint. You know what I mean? Like, will he be like this in five to seven years? So like I was talking to Stretch uh, yesterday about. I'm like. I think it's clear cut on who you would rather have between um, Lamar Jackson and Patrick Mahomes, and you're going to pick Patrick Mahomes because no matter what, like teams can just, scheme just, and figure it out. Just as a quarterback, yeah. I would take Mahomes. But both of those guys, as different as they seem, like the way that the offenses are, are built for those guys. They are, but what it, like defenses scheme, and they're going to learn more about what the Baltimore, Baltimore has been doing. And when they, they're going to have a chance I to mean, have this, and they're going to look good, good the rest of the year because everything personnel-wise, they have the all-pros, they have the pro bowlers, they have everything that's proven. But, like, what will happen again next year? I just think with Mahomes, every year he's going to be great because he can do anything with the throw. Like, he can you, throw it anywhere. At the end of the day, you'll take a guy who can yeah, throw it 80 yards. Yeah, anywhere at any time. But I do look at um, this Baltimore team, and what's really going to win me over with them right now is their defense right now. I mean, it's just with the fact that Earl Thomas uh, – bring. Uh, Bring in Earl Thomas in was a huge bring, uh, brought in. The trade for Marcus Peters was big. You know, they they are right now just they are coming together correctly, and it's I don't think they've peaked too early. I think they've been they have hungry guys, and they have Earl Thomas on a defense, leading a defense that's also been a championship contender and won a championship. Well, one of the biggest things too about Lamar Jackson, he almost seems like a reluctant superstar. Yeah. Like every post game press conference you see is just like Mark Ingram hyping him up. Yeah. And Lamar Jackson like kind of seems uncomfortable. Like he doesn't want to like talk. Mm -hmm. or, and, and and I think um, when you stay humble like that, it's like the opposite of an Antonio Brown thing. But as as far as the game goes, it's going to seem obvious to say, but I think whoever gets out to an early lead is going to have a, the best chance to win. Yeah, because whoever gets that lead, they're running the ball typically. Look, look, look if if the Patriots would have got up ten nothing, then all of a sudden you have Ryan Tannehill trying to come from mm -hmm. behind. You can't run Derrick Henry three plays in a row. I mean, there was a, there was a drive in the. They uh, had 75 yards on the uh, the drive right for the second half. There started. was there was a drive yeah. in the Tennessee game where Derrick Henry had every single yard yeah, for every, the every touch, every yard. It's like what the fuck, man? Like, so so I think if if Tennessee, if AJ Brown gets an early touchdown, if, if I think this is one of the rare games, and I'm always for deferring. Mm. And if you're the Cowboys, like for your yeah. team, you want to defer in both halves. Well, but, sure. But but for me, if in this game you want to kind of receive, you want to get up as early as possible and and not that I think if Tennessee's gonna win they need to get up early and they need to have Derrick Henry have like 30 carries mm -hmm. um, Baltimore I think has the luxury of being able to fall behind and they can score more quickly yeah um, but uh, I, I mean I, I, I want to pick Tennessee really bad but I really want Baltimore to win I'm going Baltimore on that one I'm yeah. always clear cut Baltimore on that one yeah, fuck. I'll pick Tennessee, and then if I'm right, then I'm right. If not, then... Can't be any more wrong than I am about Baltimore, <laughs> so just remember that. Um, Kansas City-Houston, I think this game has, like, the biggest potential for, like, a, a blowout in the first quarter. I like I, Kansas I, City I, a lot in this one. I, I think Houston, it's, it's the same spread, Kansas City at home, minus 10. I, I think, oh, man. I think, I think Houston is just... What, that's a lot you said, or a little? Well, ten point spread in the playoff game. You just think you know, that is. Well, it. that's what Baltimore, Tennessee yeah, was. Yeah, no, like that's what I'm saying. The multiple games in the in the playoffs for the NFL, it seems like. Well, a lot. well, so for Baltimore, Tennessee, it's more of running mm -hmm. running teams. So I would be more likely to take the ten points, yeah. especially with Tennessee. For Houston, Kansas City, Kansas City can score ten points in three minutes. Yeah, they can. Yeah. Um, and, and then I mean, don't get me wrong, Houston can too. But we were talking Their earlier. The first I think, two drives are designed to score at least ten points. I, I think this was before we started doing the podcast, but we were saying. Every single game with Deshaun Watson seems like he should be better. 
Like, we know how good Deshaun mm -hmm. Watson is, but every single game we're like, why? He has it around him. He has Will Fuller. He has, you know, DeAndre Hopkins. He has, you know, Carlos Hyde running the ball better than what they've had him since he's been in Houston. He's got Lauren, oh, he's got Tonsil at the left tackle spot now. It's like the defense has J.J. Watt back. Like, what is really the – What's really the, Why are they the not subpar better? playing? What did they? I mean? What did they score? What did Houston score? Twenty-two. I yeah, mean. and it was just it was. I just thought they should have. I was expecting a better game from Watson as a whole. You know what I mean? I it always like, feels like that, and it's like you spent, like you said, they they put the um, capital in the pick with Tunsil, so the offensive line should be at least better. Yeah. Um, I just feel like this team was. They really want to go all in to win now, and they just. They're in the playoffs. They want a playoff game, but well, I just kind of look at and think, man, well, they should be better. What would surprise you more, if Tennessee won or if Houston won? Houston won. I, I think I would be way more surprised if Houston won. Uh, out of any of the... And I'm not saying that against Baltimore. It's just because I just think... No, 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 because like, that, like we said, I mean, Houston's just not very impressive all season. Yeah, Tennessee's offense has been like, you know, since Tannehill's came in, has been a very efficient and very good offense and keeping the ball, not turning it over, running the ball well. AJ Brown's look good. You know, you had Imagine if they didn't have those six Mariota games. Yes, like that's that's What would they have won? Thirteen games? I would be shocked on both, but definitely more with um if uh sorry, if not Tennessee, but if if, if Houston won, no, I'd Houston be won. more shocked. Um, I, I think Kansas City has the potential to win by like twenty four points, yeah. especially with the rest and everything. And you give Andy Reid an extra week to, to kind of like scheme against your opponent. Um, Green Bay, the, the the later game of the weekend, Green Bay at home minus four against Seattle. Taking Green Bay. I, I, I wouldn't. This is a game. Talk about like being surprised if one team won or an, another one won. Dolphins IR. That is so true. The, he got. Traded. Oh yeah, he got traded. Yeah. Yeah. That last. That last. <laughs> he was on trade. IR. I think before yeah. he got traded too. Maybe has a salary dump pretty much. <laughs> um. No, see, talk about a game where I would not be surprised if either team won, Se Seattle and Green Bay. I would just take Seattle just from the points. And as, as far as betting goes, it's the same thing with the Eagles Seahawks last week. The only reason you're betting on the Seahawks is because they have Russell Wilson. And, but the reason why I also bet against the Seahawks right there, though, is because they don't stop the run well. And that's something that um, Green Bay does well is they run the ball well. I think Green Bay has the e potentially the easiest road, especially if they see the, the Vikings in the NFC Championship. Like, okay, this is a team that, you know, you guys have had your way. Aaron does just fine against them in crunch time moments especially. Green Bay could have the easiest road coming into the uh, Super Bowl right here, I think. I think beating up Seattle uh, is But they're be... only four-point favorites. I mean, Vegas is telling you I don't think it's a lock by any means that Green Bay wins. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know that – and it's crazy, too, to think what was Seattle's record like? 10 and, 10 and 6, 9 I and 7? I so, yeah. 10 and, and then um, Green Bay is 13 and 3. This has to be like the least respect that a 13 and 3 team is getting at home. It's quiet, and that's kind of – I think Aaron Rodgers likes that they're quiet now. You get three points theoretically just for being at home. Mm -hmm. they're, they're minus four, so they're saying they're almost an even yeah. even team. I think Aaron likes the fact that they're quiet and it's kind of being under the radar. I think that's something that they're kind of enjoying and thriving off of versus like, like when the they most, were – The most quiet 13 and 3 of yeah, all time. Yeah, when they were being talked about as a potential Super Bowl contender, they played the 49ers and everyone stopped talking about it. Or when they played the Chargers, everyone stopped talking well, about it. Well, after the Niners game – which, obviously, if you only have three losses. But with the Niners game, they look terrible. In that oh, game. man. But that's the thing. Once everyone hypes them up, then they look really bad. I think with them being quiet now, like I said, I think it could be them in the NFC Championship facing you know, another rival with that being the Vikings right there. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I feel like as far as the – they have early lines out you can bet right now without knowing the teams. Mm -hmm. You can bet on um, who's going to win the Super Bowl. Yeah, with the Saints the, out, I think Green Bay can go in the Super Bowl. Well, right well you could just do NFC, AFC. Yeah. Right, right now, the spread is AFC minus three. And they even have a total out, too. The total is like 49. Really? Yeah, it's weird. Okay. Um, but I think, I mean, out of the AFC teams left, I, I think you, I, I would favor the AFC to win, but. I would, too, um, as would, a whole. But we have the uh, comedy show here at Public House that's coming on in like 45 minutes, but um, I wanted to get at least. Nah, I mean, San Fran, I don't know. I think they're a year early, man, and I don't have the belief in them. I don't have the belief in Jimmy Garoppolo. That's where I'm going with. It's another thing we talked about. Weren't they like 13-3, and 3 too, yeah, or something like that? Yeah, they were. And Very good defense. Salah should have uh, a job. Uh, Salah should another, have a job. Like, but Another quiet 13-3 and 3 type of team, and it's like I never like felt all season like, oh, this yeah. is like the best team in the league. Yeah. I think maybe because we paid so much attention to. And also their back end was not good. A lot of people got hurt. You know, the Falcons beating them didn't look good for them. It just, like, there were other things that kind of, like, took a factor. And Devontae Adams, he's a very good receiver, too. He's a first-class receiver as well. 
You know, I just think. Devontae Adams or Amari Cooper? Not Devontae Adams. But is that because he looks good because Aaron Rodgers is throwing him the ball? Well, he, looked, he looked good with Hundley throwing him the ball, too. Fair enough. I mean, that's, that's what I'll go on record saying on that one. Four Toes Jones. Sure. Um, do you want to get into the coaching stuff a little bit? Let me get on on that one. Um, we, we talked a lot about it before the podcast, so for us it might feel like a little bit of like a recap or anything, but uh, as far as for the podcast goes, uh, obviously Rob's a Cowboys fan. They hired Mike McCarthy. And his, if I can summarize your take, it was kind of like, eh. It's, uh, here, my thing with is I'm not, <laughs> not going to gloat about it, but I'm not upset about it. Right. I don't, like, when we really <laughs> look at the overall, like, Resume of coaches that were available, he had the best resume. He had three NFC Championship appearances, one Super Bowl victory. There's not a coach with a better resume than him. People are saying Ron Rivera. Ron Rivera hasn't had a better resume than him. He's 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 just, as a whole, it's been, um, I think McCarthy, if he, him saying no to jobs last year and saying it's because he wants to study the NFL trends and do what he's doing on that, if he actually did it, we'll be able to tell really quickly because he'll be able to see the trends that they're doing. And he's not a dumb guy. Like I said, people didn't like him after the last two years in Green Bay. His offense got old and bland. It is what it is. Like, if he really took the time and tried to make it better, I think Dallas will be definitely better. I definitely hope we keep Kellen Moore. I would like him to learn under McCarthy, but... Your, your thing was that people stopped liking Mike McCarthy once Aaron Rodgers... Yeah, that's him. really what it was. And that's kind of like it's kind of like anything else on life or social media. Like, as soon as someone's like the general public or the main figure doesn't like something of, like, whatever celebrity, also everyone's like, oh, yeah, I don't like that either. Like, why well, don't like McCarthy? Like, look at his resume, his quarterback history. Look what he, We got a guy that knows quarterbacks, and that's something I can take. Yeah, it's a good hire, not a great hire. Kind of what he said, who would have been a great hire, and that, yeah. that was my overarching point as far as the entire coaching... It's funny that they call it a coaching carousel because mm. that's really what it is. As we were talking about it before the podcast, is old white guys hiring other old white guys who were at a team and then they sucked and then left for a while and they came mm. back and then they're going to suck again. And it's like, not not that Mike McCarthy sucked or anything like that, but it's like, and then we look at um, the other one that we were going to talk about for the Giants, Joe Judge, and it's like, is that your most creative hire? Is anyone who stood on the same sideline as Bill Belichick? You just hire that guy. That one. That one's the big question. Because if that's all that. you have to do to be a GM to hire a coach, like mm. I could do it. You can give me mm. the money. I can name the Patriots assistants, and then you can hire them, and you can give me a shitload of money. And that's. I just felt like that hire was uh, out of, almost out of like you know kind of a um, last second. You thought you had to hire someone right away. You know, like McDaniel's was still there. You saw it of Greg Roman out there. You saw it of, uh, Eric from uh, Kansas City out there. You saw it of other candidates. I, I didn't like the, the immediate brought in on him. I understand he's got, a, he's got a good background to understand, especially he's a special teams coordinator. There are coaches that do have success from that. He worked at Alabama ho- 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 with Saban. Hopefully he wasn't the one that didn't have a punt returner back Jesus to Christ, let yeah. it roll to the one-yard line. <laughs> Hopefully that was not his call. There's, but- there were some things that can like definitely be like, I, I don't like the hire, but like I said, who knows, maybe it's the hire makes everyone like, oh, wow, this hire actually going to turn out to be pretty well. But like you said, with Dave Gettleman, I mean, it's, it seems like a guy that Gettleman just kind of wanted to have that he can kind of push and, around. And, just have and Gettleman to tries to, to like make himself feel smarter than everybody else, like by drafting Daniel Jones, now by hiring Joe Judge. Yeah. It's like, I mean, honestly, it's a good coaching name, like mm. Joe Judge. Sounds like he should be a good coach. But um, <laughs> real player in the NFL. Um, it's a wrestler's name, like a bad wrestler. Like... Kind of like half-ass <laughs> wrestling and Coco that you see on a Saturday night at 8. Uh, Matt Rule. The fat girls. Matt everywhere. Rule got God, hired by the Panthers. Uh, I don't really know how to feel about that one. I don't know either. Why? Like, he got a freaking paid, too. Did you see that? Yeah. Uh, like, he got, seven years, $60 million. Yeah, that's, that's, like, I think that's a little bit less than the Gruden contract by three years and $40 million, but. but it was like, I mean, he got, like, compared to what, like, NFL coaches are being paid compared to college, like, he got paid, and I... Uh, it's a new owner. Uh, it's a new owner in uh, Tepper for, for Carolina, and I think he wanted his guy in there, but... He also <sighs> said, though, that he didn't want to go to a place that didn't have a quarterback, and there's really we no... We have Cam Newton. Do they, though? Or is, 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 if ownership... I, I, bet you, I bet you he I stays think he, I think he keeps I bet Cam Newton for sure, now. but, like... But, so, so look at the Baylor offense. I mean, he said, this guy said in his mm. press conference, Matt Rule did, that it's not going to be like it was in college. Yeah. I know, I'm known for the RPO, but I did, had to do that because I had to win in college. But if he ran a similar style of system as he did at Baylor in the NFL, I mean, you have Cam Newton, you have Christian McCaffrey, yeah. you have um, di- different guys in the offense that can kind of like, yeah, if you have a creative offense, I mean, 
like Cam Newton has never had the kind of offense built around him that Lamar Jackson. No. And I think, you know, well, Lamar's the, a different athlete than the, Cam the, is too. The, the NFL is a copycat league, and I guarantee you, a lot of people are going to take notice of what Baltimore did this year mm -hmm. and kind of try to expand the way they think about building an offense around yeah. a quarterback. Unless you're obviously like John Elway, and then you're just going to draft Justin Herbert with your first round pick. I would though. I like Herbert. I don't know. He, Not him. Though. I just bought him away from Elway. El Elway. Elway. It's an Elway curse. Elway just likes tall quarterbacks. You know what I don't like about Elway? His he doesn't face like, looks like that. a horse. Well, that, and he doesn't like that players come. <laughs> I appreciate the immediate agreement. It does. We've never talked about that before. It does, though. Yes, yes. But it goes like, without saying. It's, it's like he goes out there and he like he criticizes young players and their mentality. It's like, dude, you set out a whole NFL draft and it almost was a you were almost a Yankee. Like, how did you almost play for the Yankees before? The, like, he went out and just like just kills all these young quarterbacks now and says, oh, they don't have what it takes to like want to win and this and that. It's like, well, it's like Shaq. That anytime any big man does anything good, like oh. Jokic could have 46 points and no turnovers, and he's like, well, should have had 50. <laughs> okay, Shaq, we know everyone should be like you. I do like when he kills Carl Anthony Towns, though. I do like that. Well, Towns deserves it. Yeah, that's why. Like, it's like Towns brings it and Embiid does himself. deserve it. But, it's, like, it's he, great. Shaq won't give anybody credit about anything. Hey, man. He, he literally be, it could literally be his son, and he'd be like, it's not me, though. <laughs> hey, you know, Sharif O'Neal is not him. I watched Sharif, not him. I don't know. When, you, when I look at the hires, I think the, the worst hire, though, is yet to come. I think for some reason <laughs> still. Somehow the Browns are going to have a worse hire yeah, than Joe like Judge. Some, I feel like for some reason the Browns are going to bring someone in that we're all just like, what? They're not even going to bring in a Josh McDaniels, I feel like. But I th hope for their case. I hope for their case. What, what, are, the, what are the odds? What, what were we going to say? Where it's not say? someone like, you know, it's not like a Lincoln Riley or something. Like You hope it's not? I don't understand the love for Lincoln Riley. I compared it to well, Bob Stoop years three ago. three straight years of a Heisman candidate as his quarterback. I get that, but it's also it's like, did he? when was Oklahoma ever bad since 2000? Like, they've been good for 20 years now. They've been like, they've had number one quarterbacks. But there's a difference the of being good and like clearly having a, a system that works. Well, and, they've had a system that, like when they played the Gators in the national championship, they were averaging like 61 points the last six games. They were, th them being a heavy offensive group is not new. Lincoln Riley's just like, I understand he's got the Heisman guys behind it. Well, one, maybe, two, maybe, three in a row is not like a fluke. Yeah, but I mean, like I said, I just, Jalen didn't go to any Heisman ceremony or anything today. I mean, this year, he wasn't at the ceremony. It was only it was uh, two Ohio State guys in Burrow, Young, Young, Youngfield, and, and Burrow. So I mean, yeah, he was in the conversation at a yeah. point this year, but like, I, I just don't look at Riley as a guy that needs to be like that's not the answer right now. Like I didn't hey, want Jalen Hurts was there. Jalen Hurts wasn't there, was he really? They only allowed three this year. No, it was five. They've only had three for like two, three years now. No, I'm pretty sure it was. It was. I know he was in the conversation at a point. Maybe I'm wrong, but I thought it was Jalen Hurts, Joe Burrow, Chase Young, and your boy um, Fields. Fields, yes. Yeah, so boy, five. I don't believe that. I didn't. I'm not realized that five. I'm, I, don't, I, I could I easily be wrong. Three. And not that it matters, anyways. But the the, the point is like. Jalen Hurts is there. Yeah. Was he? I thought they only had three out there. It's, it's been five, I think. Joe Burrow, Justin Fields, Jalen Hurts, Chase Young. Who was the fifth? Because that's four. Joe Judge? That's the guy. <laughs> Evaluating. Hey, he drafted Nikhil Harry. He's not what he's doing. <laughs> I don't think he drafted Nikhil Harry. Oh, shit, he didn't coach him. That's pretty damn sure. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. We'll see. Um, yeah, that is true. I mean, it's just like I think that the, I think Salah is the right hire for Cleveland. Like, I think that one from the uh, the – Four in our defensive coordinator was there only was four. Okay, four, yeah. that's a pity one then, just because he's been in before. Hurts shouldn't have been in there. <laughs> well, whatever supports your point, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just don't. I, 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 who brings four candidates? <laughs> Maybe it's time you brought four. Oh, well, it's it's five. It's three. Like, uh, uh, still, I don't care about that. I'm just annoyed that it's four though. I'm actually really annoyed about that right now, because it's never like it's never been four. You know, you don't bring four. It's just, I always thought it was five. Yes. Yeah, okay. See, see again. Like we're in between. They went in between for both of us. I don't like it, but <laughs> still, both, somehow we're both wrong. <laughs> also, I'd rather you be right than us both be wrong. <laughs> but I, I think Salah from uh, the will add the discipline they need. We'll bring in what they actually. They need a guy who's a. They need a guy who's not everyone's best friend or trying to make everyone like you know happy or like not the cool stepdad that's gonna buy their like daughters cigarettes and right. beer. Right. But you is, know? is is Baker Mayfield gonna respond to that kind of guy? And I think you're right. 
that they need a guy who's going to be like, Baker, shut the fuck up, and, and, and like uh, more mm -hmm. of a disciplinarian kind of coach. For the fact they let Baker Mayfield pick Freddie Kitchens, which is if you believe that yeah. whole thing actually happened, the fact that they did that is uh, an indictment enough on Baker's judgment. Like, that's the guy who I liked. There's probably so, a reason why I liked him. He probably because he let him do whatever the fuck he wants. Freddie Kitchens probably enjoyed like you say, he's his the guy, He's the parent who yeah. bought his, like, friend's beer and shit like, like that. Like, yeah, he bought, bought the stepkid's beer. Like, that's just what, like, it's... I. I I get it on why he may have liked that attitude because Kitchens may have a similar attitude. But like when Kitchens was wearing the the uh, the Steelers started it shirt, you're like, you idiot. Like this is why your team is your team. This is why you guys have 14 penalties. I think a I've game. said this before on here too, but I just don't like my coach to be like a fat fuck. I just don't like my coach <laughs> to be. Uh, it's, How are you gonna preach discipline when you can't stop eating? Well, it's not a lot of thin coaches out there. I mean, there's not only so many Shaw McCays. Salah, and Kyle Salah, Hans. you can tell that guy works Salah out. Salah looks like he could probably put some of his own players down. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, like, that's what you want. Verbally and physically. <laughs> and I think we're ma mainly talking about this guy just based on his celebrations on the sideline this season. It's just his team rallies for him and his <laughs> you, team you, plays for you him. You want him like Ron Rivera. You want a guy yes. who players want to play for. Mm, I and thought Cleveland and Ron Rivera would have been a very, very good uh, Where did Rivera mix. wind up going? He went to the Redskins. Yeah. So Three no, new nobody, coaches in the NFC East. That's no, the talk. Three new head coaches. Nobody's going to succeed there, but, I mean, he'll do a decent job at least. He'll be better next year. What about Vrabel? Vrabel, yeah, God bless. Vrabel, I think Vrabel's still better than some of the linebackers out there right now. <laughs> I do, man. I, I really do. Like, I when... When what's his face from Tennessee went down, I thought Vrabel was gonna grab his helmet and just head out there. Man, I was like, God, he like, cause he like there was a really strong bitter ending with the Patriots in him when he got sent to Kansas City and he didn't talk to them for a while. It was like he, re I was happy he won that game. It yeah. was a very big win for him. I don't know, man. We'll see. Um, I don't know. I don't know if we really had anything about next week. Um, we'll we'll see how the games go and everything, and then. Uh, I had something for Clippers fans. You see the Clippers fans booed yes. the Clippers. I'm like, well, this is the best team you've ever had, and you're going to boo this. Like, fuck you, Clippers the fans. The expectations, though, and I had it earlier this, like, when we were talking about the NBA, the expectations for the Clippers, they should really be a lot. Like, they should be running away with a lot of games. They, they don't like that LA is doing so well, even though LA had a pretty front-ended, like, week schedule. Like, LA's uh, front half of their schedule is really, really rough, and they can't do anything about I mean, that. It just is what it is. It's, it's the record. It's it's a 30-team league, or that, what, a 28? 30. 30. Yeah. Half the teams are shitty. Exactly. And I'm not saying, you know, I'm just saying the fact that they are looking and comparing records. I think that, you know, the Clippers should, at this point, be expecting a championship this year from this team. Like, this is a team, like, this isn't Chris Paul and Blake Griffin and, you know, DeAndre uh, Jordan. This is, I, I would still put them as the favorite. The, yeah, I mean, I still think the Clippers should, like, they have a high expectation. It's because Laker fans are louder. Laker fans are back. They left the Golden State bandwagon, and they're back in. Like, <laughs> that's what they're doing. That's all they were. Like, Laker fans, they were, like, the Clipper fans were recycled Laker fans, and then uh, Golden State fans were recycled Laker and Clipper fans. And they just, like, brought all in. Like, there's no real fan base in L.A. It's like Miami. It's like, come on. Like, you got people in Miami, like, walking out in games and playoff and games. And they're trying to get back in yeah. after they come back. I'll be damned if I spend oh that much on God. a playoff game and walk out. Yeah, so what are you going to do that you need to be there Five minutes. The early. clubs are open till six. You're not gonna miss anything. I, 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 went, I went to the bowl game and then like, there, there was a family sitting in front of me and the husband said to the wife, he's like, when there's four minutes left in the fourth quarter, we're gonna leave and uh, and oh, we gotta talk about the college football championship too. That just reminded me. But the 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 husband in front said to the wife, he's like, we're gonna leave with four minutes left to beat the traffic. I'm like. You're gonna miss the end of the game, so you can save 30 minutes in traffic to go back to your shitty hotel. You're not gonna save like, 30 minutes. You're still gonna be in traffic. You're gonna save 10. No, what, what? I don't understand. What's the point? And that, that game was actually pretty good too. The, oh, the Minnesota man. Auburn game. Uh, no need to talk about Michigan's game because we. Understandable. Stopped. I was pulling for you guys. I wasn't, but I was pulling for you guys. Okay, I don't give a shit anyways. I hate college football. So like, who? <laughs> <laughs> it's all bullshit. You know, man, I am picking, um, I'm saying this right now, Clemson's winning the national championship. You think so? You take him on the money line? I don't know, man. LSU looked pretty good. They did, but they played Oklahoma. That's my analysis. I don't know, they man. Played LSU Oklahoma. looked pretty good. <laughs> and okay, every, yeah. And they played some good SEC teams, but the best of them, and they played Alabama. They had a hurt uh, Tua. I just, here's the thing, I like Clemson's attitude. I like Clemson's being doubted on. And I like, I just, Trevor Lawrence and Dabba Sweeney, I like. Yeah, how funny is there. that, that you get to the college football national championship, you're like, nobody believes in us. It's like, 
You just won last year. Yeah, but and, but they are they're not wrong though. Like people no, are like, like six point underdogs. Somebody's got to be the underdog. Well, so people have been riding them off all year. There was a point where they weren't even the top four. They haven't played anybody good. See, but I but okay. And but like, like you just said, they played. Um, well, I guess they played Ohio State, but Ohio State. And they were down by down by sixteen against Ohio State. I don't care what Ohio State fans think of the call. It's it is what it is. Like they were they were down sixteen. They came back and won. I think Clemson beats the hell out of Oklahoma. I don't think I think Trevor Lawrence had oh, at least six mom. touchdowns. Paul Feinbaum was their biggest opponent. <laughs> that is true, though. God, dude, why do you hate them so much? Because they were in the SEC. It's so it's so dumb. It's like, like, bro, we all, we all know we get it, Paul. Like, how can you really hate someone for like that? Like, okay, like he hates Urban Meyer because the way he left Florida. It's like, are you also upset he beat Nick Saban in a national championship? Like, is that well? I mean, I mean to a, be a fair, uh, my bias will show here. But it, uh, talking about Urban Meyer getting back into coaching with the Cowboys. Like, didn't you just leave for health reasons? Dude, I really want him in Dallas. Or were you Dallas. just a big I really liar? I did want Urban Meyer in Dallas. And a piece I of did. shit. Come on. You would accept him if Harbaugh got let go today. No, hell no. Oh, God. You wouldn't accept Urban Meyer in nope, no, Michigan. Nope, 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 so, nope. God. I you would gotta, not. You got to lie to keep the take strong. I get it, man. I would have to burn every shirt I own because that's the only shirts I own. <laughs> shit, man. At least you'd be able to burn him and get some new championship <laughs> shirts in, at least. You'll get a whole new wardrobe of national championship clothing. Oh man, please! Can Michigan just start cheating? Can we? We don't need Nick, we don't need to have Urban Meyer. Can we just cheat? Start cheating. Stop sleeping at kickers' houses. Cheat! <laughs> oh man, yeah, I'm picking. I'm going Clemson on that one, man. I do like Clemson a lot. I think this. I think um, big fan of Higgins as well, the wide receiver. Really want Dallas to target him in the draft, but I think that overall this team is coming in with an attitude and Dabo's feeling it. I like Dabo to outcoach Coach O. That's where I like it too. Yeah, we'll see. I'm going to pick LSU. Um, I, I'm excited to watch the game. I think it's going to be an awesome, I think it's gonna be an awesome sadly. game. I just hope it's not a blowout. Um, but um, that, that's it. Thank you guys for sticking with us uh, for this long. There's no other podcast, just us. Nope. Where about podcast at? Where no other podcast at? <laughs> um, thank you, guys. We'll talk to you next week. Bundesliga.